Welcome to the What's Happening Birmingham video podcast. Hello, everybody. This is Jarvis S. Scott with What's Happening in Birmingham. Today, I am joined. I got three other people today on the podcast. These ladies are with the Birmingham, make sure I get it right, Birmingham Black Nurses. And they're on the podcast today to celebrate and talk about National Nurses Week and the Mini Nurse Academy. So, ladies, thank you and welcome on the podcast today. First time for every one of you all. Thank you. Well, thank yeah. you. <laughs> great, great, great. So I'm going to start introduction. So Cecilia, you're first. And okay. then Jennifer and Dr. Dawson. Thank you. My name is Dr. Cecilia Sims. I am a lifetime member of the um, National Black Nurses Association. And of course, I'm excited about uh, Nurses Week. And now I'm absolutely excited about coming onto your podcast to talk about the National Black Nurses Association Mini Nurse Academy. Okay, good afternoon, everyone. I'm Dr. Martha Dawson. Uh, I've been a nurse for 45 years, and currently I am a professor at UAB School of Nursing here in Birmingham. I'm also the immediate uh, past president of the national organization of the National Black Nursing Association. Also, I am a lifetime member and a very active member with the Birmingham Black Nurses Association. And Jennifer, your turn. And I am Dr. Jennifer Coleman. I am also a lifetime member of the National Black Nurses Association. I am a professor of nursing at Moffitt and Sanders School of Nursing here at Sanford University in Birmingham. And for the Birmingham chapter of the National Black Nurses Association, I am a past president of the local chapter. And currently, I chair the mentorship program for nursing students that we have in our chapter. And I'm happy to be here. Okay, well, this is not the first time I've heard about you all's organization and some of the great work you do. And I'm glad it's like a great camaraderie of, you know, I like to say, Black nurses coming together um, using like shared experiences. But the first question I got for you is, um, and the reason why I want to bring you all on the podcast. So tell me about this mini nurse academy program you all are doing. Go ahead, Dr. Dobson. Well, okay, I'll go ahead and get started from the national level. Uh, actually, the mini nurse academy is a program that really started with the Birmingham Black Nurses Association here in the Birmingham area. The first school that uh, we did as a pilot school was actually Inslee Elementary School. Uh, and we had, I believe, somewhere around about 12 students that went to that program right before the pandemic in 2018-19 school year. And then we followed up in 2019 with uh, Erin Intermediate School over in the uh, Center Point area. Uh, and I think we had about 15 or more students to graduate from that program. And actually, I am the... Uh, coordinator and the founder of the National Black Nursing Association, which was a spinoff from the Birmingham Black Nursing Association Mini Nurse Academy. And Dr. Jennifer Coleman is also one of the co-PIs at the national level uh, for this program, along with another one of our members, Dr. Loretta Lee, who is uh, also a professor at UAB School of Nursing. The Mini Nurse Academy, the entire concept is around introducing our students uh, to the nursing profession and also other health disciplines at a very early age. So we start working with them when they're in the third through the uh, sixth grade. And I understand that you are a product of the Terrence City uh, school system yeah. and currently we're on our third cohort at the Terrence City Intermediate School. And I'm going to turn it over now and let uh, Cecilia, Dr. Sims, and also Dr. Coleman give you more information about the Terrence City program. Yes, we started our program at Terrence City School, Intermediate School, 
back in 2023, spring of 2023. And we had um, about 23 graduates from cohort one. And then we started um, cohort two in the fall of 2023. And just as Dr. Dawson said, we will be graduating our third cohort of students on tomorrow. And we are super excited. We offer um, our students an opportunity to learn nursing skills that nurses perform on a daily basis, such things as blood pressures, um, stop the bleed, uh, infection control, things of that nature. So the students are excited. We are excited to bring our program out into the community. Dr. Coleman? So I think just to back up the goal or the aim of the Mini Nurse Academy, and it is a national program. The National Black Nurses Association has, has trademarked the Mini Nurse Academy. Okay. And so the goal and the purpose of the MBNA Men and Nurse Academy is to work on nursing workforce diversity. We look at the nursing workforce and we know, first of all, we know that nurses are the largest healthcare group of all healthcare providers. And when we look at nurses, we see that we are not diverse at all. We look at the population of Americans and we, we're becoming quite diverse, but the nursing workforce has not done that. We have research data and, and, and everything that say that care recipients or patients are more likely to adhere to care recommendations, to more likely to take better care of their own health if their care provider shares that patients values and lived experience and kind of the pay if the care recipient feels like they've really been respected and heard from their perspective and so the research shows that if we can get more care providers that mirror the population we believe the health of the nation will be improved so our, our goal is to add a more diverse nursing workforce to place out there. So our many nurse academies are all over the country. As we said, we started in Birmingham and we have them in chapters, National Black Nurses Association chapters all over the country. And we are looking at students from those population groups that are traditionally not represented in nursing. And so that might be uh, diversity in gender, because men in nursing represent a real tiny percentage of nurses. Uh, we look at gender, we look at race, ethnicity, background, neighborhood where you live, any of those population groups that are not represented in nursing, those are the ones that we are trying to reach the, the young children. Because we also know that young children start looking at career options really early. So that's why our Mini Nurse Academy is for elementary school students. We want to get them when they're starting to think about a career option. We want to put nursing on the radar as one of their options. And just to give you some information about the demographic data, uh, the most recent report that came from government from the HRSA group is uh, back to 2022. And it's, the data is always going to be one to two years old. But out of that uh, survey, what they have determined is that uh, 4.3 million RNs within the United States, these are licensed RNs, not students, uh, <clears throat> only out of that 4.3 million, only 11% identified themselves as Black and African American. So you can see that we are barely making up uh, you know, maybe about 400,000 out of that. And that's just not enough to mirror the population with the population being around 27%. So we definitely want to move the needle on that so that we can have more diverse nurses, not just at the bedside, but in those administrative positions and uh, as faculty members, 
those that are working at the community level and in the community. So one of the things that we are hoping to be able to do is as we expose these young people to the profession of nursing, that we're not just teaching them about our discipline as a nurse, but we want them to understand that nursing is a science-based STEM program. You have to have that math. You're gonna need that chemistry, biology, uh, and anatomy and physiology. So we want, we, if we can uh, approach them while they're in elementary school, then they know when they start moving into high school and junior high school, they have to be focusing on those science-based courses. And so that's what we hope to instill within them is that this is possible. It's just like if you had to get up every day and go practice football because mm -hmm. you're on the football team, yeah. or if you was a skater or a gymnast, you know, you become better because you do it over and over. And so we want them to know they can, can become better at science and math and English and all those other things that are required for nursing just by being exposed to it and then learning it over and over and practicing it. But the other beauty of this program is that we're also teaching students about health equity and the social determinants of health. So they are learning about how the environment impact their health. You know, if they have air pollution or contaminated soil, so they're learning about the environmental justice piece of that. But they're also learning about they need to eat, live healthy and eat healthy. Living healthy meaning getting out, exercising, whether you're walking, riding your bike, again, playing some of those sports that you're playing. And we encourage the students to let them know, yes, you can still be a football player and be a nurse. Or you can um, be a basketball player and be a nurse. You can play tennis and be a nurse. You can be a swimmer and be a nurse. We have many nurses, uh, you know, within our own organization here locally. And we are the largest chapter with over 300 some members. And so we want them to know that, yes, you can do other things while you're in high school, when you go out to college. As a matter of fact, we encourage you, if you can get a sports scholarship and then after a while, just flip that over and start taking your sciences mm -hmm. and your nursing courses, that's great. We have many of our members that are already doing that. Uh, and the other thing we want them to understand is that a lot of people don't like to talk about this, but I do. Uh -huh. Nursing is a very well good paying job. You can almost uh -huh. find a job anywhere. <laughs> and if you remember during the pandemic, not to take anything away from the physician and the scientist, but I am 100% plus 20 convinced that if it had not been for those nurses in the hospital at the bedside with those patients, the death would have been much more if it had not oh, been yeah, for I nurses. Agree. Because nurses leaned in and they were there day in and day out all around the clock the way we are all the time. And so they became not only the nurse, but due to the isolation, they became the priests. They became the Zoom person like you are now talking uh -huh. to the family on the phone because the family could not visit their patient. I can't think of another occupation that pivoted so quickly and adapted so quickly to help us to survive and come out of that pandemic. It was nurses. So here's, I guess, before I get into the, the question how the curriculum was developed, my quick thoughts for years, I've always heard about, you know, a nursing shortage um, going across. And then, but the interesting thing you all bring up about the baby boomer nursing that's about to retire, which that's interesting, too. And then the last part, too, I think the perception of could people think of a nurse, they typically think of female. But slowly over time, it is more male nurses out here. You know, right. Yes, at this time, according to the data, mm -hmm. there are more men in nursing than there are African American nurses oh, because wow. the number of men in nurses is at about thirteen point nine percent. So although oh, they just started growing, they are already outpacing us. You know, yes, included in that number of men are also uh, black and brown men as well. You okay. know, but the fact is, is that since they are entering the profession at a later stage. We would have hoped that we as African Americans would be making up a larger percentage. And so that's why we really need to focus on our population. But we include in that population because uh, as we looked at our demographic data uh, across the country with all of our 
12 uh, chapters that we currently have in about 10 different states, 11 different states. Uh, we realized that uh, the number of African-American students participating in the program and the number of Hispanic students are very close. It's like 44 and 34 percent, but we've had Native Americans, we have Asian, we have Filipinos. We've even had uh, students that are from Hawaii participate in this program across the country. So we're very diverse and we're very pleased about that. But you are correct. Uh, I, I went ahead and told them myself earlier when I said I've been a nurse for 45 years. I'm in that baby boom generation. Uh, with just a few more years that I'm going to be a nurse. And so I need to find at least 10 more people to mm. push through the nursing program because I want good nurses taking care of me, okay? So oh, if yeah. I want those good nurses taking care of me, I got to make sure we produce some more of them. But uh, at this time, for the first time in history, however, the baby boomer generation is one of the smaller population within nursing. The group that uh, has the largest number at this time, let me see if I get this correct, I believe it's the age 45 to 54. Uh, okay. uh, either, no, it's 38 to, 38 to 44. They make up about a million of that 4.3 million that I was talking about. Oh, and wow. the baby boomer is making about 600,000. Mm. You, you know. For some reason can't hear Jennifer. Yeah, Jennifer, we lost you. So while Jennifer... Yeah, so tell me about the, how you all developed the curriculum for it. Okay, the curriculum was actually developed uh, through a national uh, uh, committee that we have at the national level. And as I stated earlier, Dr. Jennifer Coleman is one of our, what we call principal investigators, and also a key participant in helping us to design and develop the material. So some of the things that we, we actually cover, usually we start, start off with the history of nursing. Mm -hmm. uh, and with that history of nursing, we talk about all of those great people that really started us back in the 1800s in nursing. And, and then we kind of bring it forward to, you know, sharing with them some of the national leaders from the National Black Nursing Association. And then we move that on down to uh, the state level. So we talk about uh, like uh, Pauline Fletcher, the first black RN that was in the state of Alabama. And a lot of people don't realize that right from the Civil Rights Museum is a monument with her picture on it. Oh, and wow. many people who actually might have gone to the Fletcher um, camp don't realize that she is the nurse that started that particular camp. Okay. Uh, and, and she has such rich history because she started this camp back in the 1800 when, you know, we could own land that much and she was buying and purchasing the land. But not only that, when she invited mm -hmm. uh, some uh Caucasian white nurses to come and speak at the camp on leadership, the camp was actually raided by uh, Kuka Klansmen, uh, oh, the KKK, well. as we called them. And, uh, and so, but out of that history came also when, when the federal law was passed that that group of individuals could no longer wear those hoods to hide their face. It was partly because of the incident that took place right here in Alabama at that particular camp. So we have a rich history to educate our children on. Then we bring them on down to the Birmingham chapter and we introduce them to some of our chapter members and those things. Uh, Jennifer, are you reconnected? I started talking because we sure. couldn't hear you. Can you hear me now? Yes, yeah, we, we can. can. Now. I don't know what <laughs> happened. I was, I was just gonna mention that about the nursing shortage, you mentioned that. And I was saying from the time I've been in nursing school and all the while I've been a nurse, We've always talked about a nursing shortage. So okay. we are just continuing to try and get as many nurses out there as possible. But it seems like we have always had a shortage. And with the Mini Nurse Academy, we think that if we can start our young children thinking about nursing as mm -hmm. what they want to be when they grow up, that can impact the shortage quite a lot. And we make an intentional effort also to look at gender. 
So we have men who are nurses to come mm -hmm. in and, and talk with our, our students. We have uh, young boys in the program also. We, we try to look at all areas of diversity to mirror the population. And so uh, as Dr. Dawson was saying, uh, we bring in nurses that they will know who, who they can identify with. And, you know, we bring in a nurse who's now a nurse, nurse practitioner, nurse anesthetist, and we tell them, you know, uh, th this person went to play basketball, played football, mm -hmm. went to, to college on a basketball scholarship. So our, our boys can know that you can still do the things you want to do. And, and so we, we think with the Men and Nurse Academy and Dr. Sims is doing a fabulous job coordinating everything and getting all the nurses together. Maybe she can tell us a little bit about how the nurses do the, the, the work when, when we have the students in there because she's managing the, the nurses from the Birmingham chapter that are really implementing the academy. And another thing I guess you, I want you all to answer from like how many schools are participating right now? In the, in the, um, right now, you know, we said this is a national program. So okay. right now we have 12 different chapters in 11, 11 states across the country that mm -hmm. are operating a mini nurse academy. It's because in one state we have two chapters working. So, uh, so the Birmingham chapter is our Alabama academy, but we have 11 states totally with an academy operational right now. Okay. So the, go ahead. And to start us off, because it is a national program, and so we have a curriculum that's consistent across all states. Dr. Dawson was the national president, the immediate past national president. And so when she was president of the national organization, she convened a committee of representatives from 11 or 12 different states. There were 17 members on the committee and we represented, I think about 10 or 11 states. And that committee created the curriculum that all of the states are now following. Oh, that's good. That's real good. Um, so still you wanna add something to that? Um, I, I wanted to um, add to that here in Birmingham, um, at this moment, we are implementing um, one at one school, and that's Tanner Intermediate School. But we have, as Dr. Dawson said earlier, um, it has been implemented at three schools. Okay. So how are you all funding the local and the national program? Okay, I think I'll take this question for you. Uh, in, in terms of the funding, we've been very fortunate. Uh, okay. We've been able to get grant funded. Uh, the larger funder at this time is Direct Relief. They have a health equity fund, and we've been able to secure from them over $400,000 that are being uh, four hundred. dollars Okay, that's, uh, let me put this right over $400,000, uh, which is close to a half a million. Then we've had other funders that had given us anything from maybe 30 to another 50,000 or 8,000 or 10,000 or 20,000. So I would say at this time, the total funding for the program that would allow us to open additional schools this coming fall is uh, around about $600,000. And we're looking forward to applying for additional grants because the National Black Nursing Association, we are in uh, about 35 different states. I'm adding the 35, we used to say 33, but guess what? Mm -hmm. We're opening uh, a, a chapter in uh, New Mexico. We're opening one in our all places, <laughs> but we're moving and expanding. Uh, and we have close now to about 116 chapters when we bring on these next four uh, new chapters. Uh, and so our goal is eventually we would love for every chapter to be able to uh, have uh, 
you know, uh, a mini nurse academy. So we're primarily doing the funding at the national level, but we're also fortunate that as some people hear about this from the local level, they come in and decide they would like to fund the school. And that's how in two of the states, we, we got additional funders because we had CDS who heard about this project and they funded one in Virginia and they also funded one in Orlando. Uh, and then this year we just picked up and started another one in Jacksonville, Florida that we are funding. And we just had a conversation, Dr. Coleman and I last night with a group of nurses from the Miami chapter that are doing this. So as we get funding, we continue to expand this and we will continue to write grants in order to fund this program because we believe in this program highly. And we have our own banner, our own uh, logo, our own motto, and our motto, we just absolutely love. It is a, a child educated, is a family elevated. Oh, I like that. Is a generation liberated. Oh, okay. So, and so we, we look at this through the economic as well as the social lens. And, and with our funds, uh, uh, we are purchasing equipment because our goal is for each location that is operating a men and nurse academy that the school would provide a little bit of space and we outfit that school space with equipment to simulate a simulation lab or a skills lab. So when the students come into our area, we want them to see all of the equipment that nurses use. Oh, and that's so, good. Yes, yeah, so for instance, at Tarrant Intermediate School, we are so fortunate. They have given us a really great space and we have outfitted that space with CPR mannequins, um, uh, skeleton, six foot life size skeleton with all the bones so we can teach the students about the bones. We have a human, tor not human, but a torso model that shows the upper part of the body with the organs on the inside of the body. So we have posters on different things. And so we we outfit the space with equipment, and that is what we're using for our for our funds. And then we also provide things to the students, uh, paraphernalia to the students, stethoscope, a lab coat, a bag, a tote bag with lots of materials about health and things like that. So that's where our funds are going. Our nurses who are implementing the program and teaching, they are all volunteers. So we are not using any funds on personnel. We're using all of our funds on the students in the program and the, the equipment that they are practicing on and doing nurse-like duties on. And we can leave that equipment in the school space because like at Tarrant, this is our third cohort at Tarrant and they, keep it for us, and then we go back the next time with another group of students. So as we open additional schools and additional locations, we need funds to purchase equipment for those spaces. So since I'm one of the, uh, one of the primary uh, fundraisers and grant for this, I just go ahead and ask why I have you here. So if anyone wants to donate, Okay. Please feel free to reach out to the Birmingham Black Nursing Association. We are a 501c3 organization. So if you donate, it is tax deductible. Mm -hmm. uh, and we don't mind if you want us to add your name to our banner or mention you while we're talking. We will do that as well. And if you decide, well, you want one at the school that the elementary school you went to and you had to find, you can contact us and we we'll help you. Uh, use your fund at that particular school if you want to as well. And, and I'm going to ask uh, Dr. Coleman to also speak about what we call the pop-up mini nurse academy, because we have strategy that if we can't get in your school, we can pop it up somewhere for you. Oh, you want to explain what that is, Dr. Coleman? Okay, so our, our curriculum, our program is designed to go a semester long, you know, the entire fall semester or the entire spring semester. However, a pop-up academy would be in a, a shorter time period, an abbreviated time period. 
And we actually did implement a pop-up academy one summer, two summers ago here in the Birmingham area with the Birmingham Parks and Recreation, uh, where we, we provide all of the same information just in a shorter time period. And because it is a pop-up, we don't have our equipment stationary like we do at the school. So we're not able to do a, 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 lab, a stationary lab setting, but we, we can do that. We can do a pop-up at a church. If a church has a summer camp program, parks and recreation summer camp, if a school has an abbreviated summer program, we can do a pop-up there. We just would ask for a, a certain period of time, maybe every week, to meet with the students and talk about nursing and have some hands-on activities with the students. So we're available for that as well. Uh, Dr. Sims, is there anything else with the pop-up? Um, I think I think that's it. Mm -hmm. well, Dr. Sims, why don't you tell them about the, the event where the kids was able to come to our national meeting in Atlanta last year? Very good, yes. So we had our national um our national uh, meeting last uh, conference last year in Atlanta and a select group of students, well, I say select, five students were able to attend our conference. So they were able, the conference always have something readily available for the students. So um, they were able to come to Atlanta. Um, we, um, National Black Nurses Association, we, um, we got them there. Their parents were able to bring them there. And they stayed at the hotel. They attended uh, one of our biggest events that we have at the conference. So they were there for that. And then um, they went off-site, okay? And they were able to participate. And they went to, I can't, I can't remember. Google. Um, it, was, it, was, it was Google down in, in the, yeah, the they large cooperation. They went to the Google camp. Exactly. Thank you, Dr. Dawson. And so, yeah, so they were able to meet other um, students from different um, schools in Atlanta, and they had a good time. They really did. It was fun for them. So, yes, thank you. And I think because one of our aims, again, is for the students from a, from a population group that doesn't typically think about being a nurse. Our aim is to show them nurses who look like them, who came from their communities and things like that and share their backgrounds. So when they came to Atlanta to the national conference last year, there were, I don't know how many thousand. <laughs> we had at least over a, a thousand participants. There. Yeah. And these are nurses from all over the country that look like the students from the Birmingham Mini Nurse Academy. So they were, and they were nurse leaders. And so those students from Birmingham that were there, they attended the opening ceremony the first night, which is a big deal. And they saw nurses that looked like them from all over the country in positions of authority. And they were able to interact with them and kind of hear a little bit about their experience so we were hopeful by showing them that they could see themselves in a few years because we, you know, we had worked with them at Tarrant and they knew us, but we wanted them to know that there are hundreds and hundreds and thousands of nurses who look like you, who came from your neighborhood, a neighborhood like you, and you can do it too. And so that was the purpose of us providing that opportunity for them. And that's the goal for all of the, the men and nurse academies around the country. If the national conference is close enough and the chapter can finance it, because the Birmingham chapter found the fund, found the money. The Birmingham chapter basically reached into their pocket and paid the way for these students to go to Atlanta with their parents and stay at the hotel and attend the conference. So we, we're hoping that other chapters, the conference this year is in San Francisco. So if we had a mini nurse academy close enough to San Francisco, maybe their students could go to the conference this year. So that's the goal. We don't just do 
the curriculum at the school, we're planning to follow them and show them what it's like to be a nurse later on. So and that's okay. another go ahead. Go oh, ahead. And then I, I'll I'll make 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 go ahead. more information, where can they contact you all, the organization? I'm sorry. Go to the website and you can type in the Birmingham Black Nursing Association. And they can actually see pictures and other upcoming events uh, uh, on our website there. If they want additional information, they can also go to the National Black Nursing Association website. But both websites also have information about the Mini Nurse Academy uh, as well, uh, so that they can get you know more information. Uh, also, there's uh, I think an email address as well as mailing address, and we have all of those uh, social media tags. You know, we on Instagram and you know Facebook. whatever else, Facebook and all mm -hmm. of those things. They can locate us that way as well. Uh, yeah, I like it. If you go to the National Black Nurses Association website, the Mini Nurse Academy has a tab on the homepage. And if you click on the Mini Nurse Academy tab on the national homepage and scroll down on the page to video links, there will be two videos there that show the Birmingham group in action. The first video is about a 90 second clip of our very first uh, pop-up Mini Nurse Academy here in Birmingham. The second video is five and a half minutes and it was professionally produced by Direct Relief. And it's really showing the nurses from Birmingham at Tarrant with the students. So the National Black Nurses Association webpage, click on Many Nurse Academy and scroll down to video links. Well, and if, they can't, if they can't remember that, if they just go out there to their browser and put in Many Nurse Academy, they would start seeing things from uh, Orlando, uh, Jacksonville, Florida, Oregon, uh, LA, Connecticut, Virginia, Pennsylvania, Birmingham. They'll start seeing all of our different chapters just by going, you know, www.mbna or either just go in and say Mini Nurse Academy and we're going to show up. Well, I want to thank you all for coming on today. Um, I salute you all for, you know, like you said, the the pay is pretty good, but they can, it's almost like your profession and school teachers and first responders, they can never pay you all enough because, like you said, you are always on the front line um, of these things and also kind of also reaching back to help the next generation because at some point, like I always tell people, when you get older, you need somebody younger to give you a glass of water. So that may be the same adage, you know, when you get older, it's going to need a, a nurse, a hopefully younger nurse because we can't take care of each other. We all need to be taken care of. So uh, thank you all for coming on today. Thank you all for watching. Please check out what's happening at Birmingham.com for more interviews. Don't forget to subscribe to the YouTube channel and check out the audio version of this on Apple Podcasts. Thank you all again and have a great day. And you're interested in becoming a nurse, reach out to these ladies. Thank you all again. Have a great day. Bye -bye. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Bye -bye. Thank you. Thank you for watching the What's Happening Birmingham video podcast. Please check out our website app or subscribe to our YouTube channel for the latest videos today.